Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today we're going to paint all of my Legion's Imperialis Malkador tanks. And because I want to go for a Russian uh, 4BL, just green color scheme on these, we're going to actually use the Ammo by Meg uh, Russian 4BO modulation set to add some some nice definition to this monochromatic uh, color scheme. So if you've never heard of a modulation set, essentially it's four to five colors um, that are just shades of each other. Uh, so you'll normally get a you know a really, really dark base and then three progressively lighter shades that you can highlight with. Now, these sets are typically meant to be used with an airbrush, uh, and that's how I will be using this set today. However, if you really, really wanted to and you didn't have an airbrush, you could utilize these paints uh, using the glazing technique, but especially at this scale, that would honestly destroy your soul. Uh, whereas using the airbrush is just super fast, super easy. Um, so if you really wanted to follow along, I highly encourage uh, that you do so with an airbrush and not using the glazing technique. Um, but anyway, so this set in particular comes with four paints. So the Russian dark base, the Russian base, Russian light base, and then Russian highlight. And then on a larger scale tank, you can kind of see where what they're going for is down toward the bottom of the tank on the sides. You're going to have a really dark color that gets progressively lighter as you get to the top. And then on the top surface of the tank, you can do that progressive fade on all of your panels. Now, because we're working on tiny tanks, uh, we're going to approach this a little bit differently, as you'll see throughout the video. Uh, but without further ado, let's uh, get started. All right, so before we get into painting with the modulation set, uh, let's just talk about preparation. So these tanks are very, very tiny, and it's almost impossible to hold it in your hand and be able to get good coverage through the airbrush. So what I did was use double-sided uh, tape on top of my painting handles. And if you're interested in these STL files, uh, they're linked down in the description. Uh, they're on my cult store. But just using that double-sided tape and then setting the tank down on top of that, that's enough strength to hold the tank in place and, uh, you know, nobody's ever going to really see the underside of the tank, so it's okay if that doesn't get covered. If you're a completionist and that's going to really, really bother you, after we get our base coats down, you can go ahead, pop the tank off. It comes off pretty easy. And then just go ahead and hit that with some primer and then paint it with a brush. And, uh, you know, you'll be good to go. But with that prep out of the way, uh, Tari is not home today, so I've set up a makeshift uh, airbrush setup uh, in the kitchen, <laughs> so I'll be able to film uh, the airbrushing steps today, so let's get to it. Alright, so first up, we're going to spray Russian Dark Base, and we want a really nice solid uh, coat of this all over the miniature. Uh, so don't spray it on too thick, still use thin layers, but you may want two or three coats to build up that solid color. All right, so next we're coming in with Russian green base, and we're going to apply this sort of like the second step of a zenithal. Uh, so we're coming in at a 45 degree angle and we're going to do a halo around the entire miniature. And then we're also going to make sure that we hit it uh, directly from above as well. All right, so now we're coming in with Russian light base. And we're focusing this mainly on the top third 
of the side panels as well as the very top flat surfaces of the tank as well as the vanquisher barrel as well and now you're going to want to turn the pressure on your airbrush down uh, just to make sure that you have the maximum amount of control and now we're coming in with the russian highlight uh, now this is a very bright color so you want to be very sparse with this we're focusing on uh, the bigger flat panels on the top the tip of the barrel and then any parts of the side of the tank that you want to accentuate so for me that's going to be the large doors as well as the top roughly quarter of the side panels and lastly we're going to seal in all that work with a coat of satin lucky varnish from ammo and that's just going to help us later on when we start working with the enables. All right, so here are the tanks after we applied the modulation colors and some satin varnish. So as you can see here, we've got our darker color showing through at the bottom of the side panels and down deep in the recesses but then we get progressively lighter as we hit the top of the tank now don't worry about the highlight colors they do look a little bit stark right now but we will fix that with an enamel wash later on in the process right now though we need to finish up the acrylics so next we're going to go ahead and use ak rusty tracks to go ahead and paint the treads and now i've mixed this with a little bit of uh, satin varnish just so that we can uh, not have to worry about satin coating this later and now this is a very very thin paint uh, so it is probably going to take two coats to get good coverage but we want to get solid coverage on these tracks before we move on to the next step okay, so here we go after two coats of the rusty tracks and now i am going to 40 kfi the tank just a little bit even though we're doing a somewhat historical scheme and we're going to black out the bolters with black legion uh, contrast paint and just a nice quick coat and I'm actually gonna swap to a bigger brush now I am gonna leave the sponson mount in the uh, Russian green so just be very careful as you're reaching your brush back in there all right, now this step is optional, uh, but to help tie the tanks into the rest of my force, I'm gonna go ahead and add a colored stripe toward the front of the tank. And I'm gonna use this uh, reinforcement panel right here as my delineation line. Now my force, my accent color is bearing blue uh, from scale 75. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that to paint in this stripe and we're just gonna go ahead and cover everything to the right of that line all right so here we are with the accent color applied and now if you're really a glutton for punishment you can freehand a stripe in the middle of that to help break that up uh, which I'm going to do with this Liquitex Titanium White. So after you've blocked in the outer edges, you could just go ahead and fill in that space. And here we are with the white stripes done. Uh, now, doing this is a great way to tell different units of the same tank 
apart within a formation. Uh, so I have two that have the the stripes, uh, blue and white, and then I've got two that just have the blue panel, and I'll be able to use that as a way to differentiate between the two squads. All right, so here's all of the acrylic uh, base coats done. So now we're gonna move on to weathering. And we have two acrylic steps that we're gonna do before we move on to the enamels. The very first thing we're gonna do is use this Ammo Light Metal uh, Dry Brush Paint from their Dio range. And we're gonna concentrate this on the tracks just to kind of pick out the uh, detail on those areas and if you spill this over onto the hard edges of the tank that's okay it's just gonna look like chipping at this scale but we want to really just focus on the tracks and use a very light hand and make sure that your brush is really dry because uh, you don't want this to smear on the panels that we've already done. And also make sure you hit the, the Sponson bolter. And you can do a couple of strokes along the sides to pick out any rivets or handles. All right, so now we're on to our final acrylic step. And uh, that's gonna be to use this chipping uh, by Ammo in their Dio dry brush range. Now, even though it's a dry brush paint, I'm just using this on my palette with a very small brush. And now we're gonna be somewhat sparse with this. So initially I'm gonna hit the ends of my barrels and then carry that in jagged lines just to kind of show where the paint would have been burned away or maybe scraped off from Traversing through some rough terrain. And same thing on the Vanquisher barrel. And then if you wanted, you can use this to uh, show the tank, you know, traveling through rough terrain. So you can dot this in on the front edges of the tank and you can also show paint scraping off of other details such as this door right here we'll just add some dots maybe get the handles those would have seen quite a bit of use But overall, you want to be fairly sparing uh, in your application. Uh, you don't want to overpower everything that we've done already. And in this scale, less is more. All right, so now we are ready for enamel. So the very first thing that we need to do, I've decanted a little bit of mineral spirits. Uh, there they are. And we need to pre-wet the tank. We don't want this to be uh, super, super wet, but we want to just slightly dampen the surface of the entire tank. And this will help uh, one, thin the wash while it's on the model so that it doesn't overpower it. But then two, it'll also help the wash flow better into all of the uh, detail of the model. All right, so now that we're ready to wash, um, so I went back and forth on which one of these colors I, uh, you know, wanted to use. So I tried one pink in Starship Filth, and then I did a couple in this uh, dark brown wash for green vehicles. Uh, both are ammo products, and I think I prefer the Starship Filth. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. Now, with this being an oil brusher, 
you're going to need to mix the wash yourself. But that's very easy to do, so I will show that on camera. So all you're gonna do is just load up the applicator brush and just dab some of that into your metal palette. Just like that. And then we're gonna take our bottle of mineral spirits. And I've got a little plastic pipette here and I'm just going to drop in about six drops and then we'll go ahead and mix that up and check the consistency. And so now to check the consistency on this, I'll move closer. When you touch the side of the well, you want that wash to run down and leave just a little bit of color on the surface. I think we might need like one more drop of the center. We'll give it two just for good measure. Yeah, that's good. So now all we're going to do is slap this all over the tank. Now you don't want your brush to be crazy overloaded. And if you notice pulling anywhere, uh, kind of similar to contrast paint, you can move the pigment around. But you just want to go over the entire surface of the, the green plates We'll leave the tracks alone for now. We're going to hit those with a different color. Just give a nice generous coat of this all over your tank. Now the next step is somewhat optional, but I want to add a little bit of rusting to the exhaust. So I'm going to use this streaking brusher, uh, which is an enamel paint. Uh, but enamels and oils, they use the, the same medium most of the time, so mixing the two doesn't hurt. So down, just going to dab in some of that rust color. Just like that. Right, and now we're going to come in with the Tamiya Black Paneline Accent Color. And we're going to darken down most of the recesses. And now, bear in mind, I didn't mention it before, but this tank is still wet with the wash. So this black is going to mix with the... Oh, my applicator just came off. That's going to be fun to fish out. And we're back. Nothing beats live TV. So, as I think I was saying, the black is going to mix with that grime color, and you're going to get shadows of varying intensities, uh, which leaves a really cool effect on the tank. Now, you do want to be careful of this. We are somewhat being selective with where we're applying this. You don't want to just, you know, haphazardly flood the whole tank with this. But if you do happen to make a mistake, since we applied an oil paint first, uh, that's going to greatly extend the drying time of this and you'll be able to come in and clean it up just with a brush uh, slightly dampened with thinner a lot easier than just using straight enamels but any sculpted detail we want to make sure we run some of this color around it so like these door handles on that side door and then we also want to run it along any uh, hard edge uh, recessed panels. So, 
All of the washes, with the exception of the track wash, have now been applied. And now while this is still wet, you can take a brush that's been dampened with a little white spirits and kind of refine and clean any pulling that you might see starting to happen in places where you don't want it. So now all we've got to do is use our track wash, which for that, since I'm going for a sort of rusty look, I'm going to use this ammo light rust wash. And now this, uh, you can either apply this on thick or you can apply it uh, somewhat thinned down. It really all depends on the look that you're going for. Now on my other tanks, I was somewhat conservative with this, uh, but this time around I won't quite thin it out so much. So I'll just add like two drops of thinner. Just thin that out a little bit. And then we're just going to run this all over the tracks and make sure you get the uh, sides where they start to wrap around underneath. And this will just add some bright orange uh, tones to our dark rusty track color. And it'll also tent the metal track links. And then you can also dab this onto the exhaust areas, kind of blend out the slightly darker rust that was starting to dry there. All right, and so there's all of our oil and enamel washes applied. Now, because we used an oil paint uh, on our lowest layer here, I'm gonna probably let this dry for a solid three days uh, before I hit it with a matte varnish. Uh, but just to show you, so this one is still in the you know three day drying window, but everything is dry to the touch. And so this is the sort of look that you're gonna get once uh, all of the oils and enamels aren't wet. So I'm gonna go away, hit these with a matte varnish, and then we'll move on to the final details. All right, so the oils and enamels have fully dried, and I've gone ahead and hit this with uh, ultra matte uh, varnish from AK. And so we've got a really nice even finish across the tank. And now we've just got one more step to do, and then we're finally done. So I've already started. So there are some lights on the tank that uh, if you want, you can go ahead and paint those in. I've chromed them out already. So you've got sort of like a targeting light here, then you've got the commander's periscope, then you have your gunner's periscope right there. And so we are going to paint those with the Ammo Crystal Red. Now, they make these crystal paints in a variety of colors, so uh, you can use whichever color you like. I really like the red because it'll contrast nicely with the green that we've already got. And so with those crystal paints, you want to lay down a very bright silver and then once that's dry, you just come in and just dot this over it. And this will give you a really, really nice bright gem effect. And now these details are super tiny. So you do want to be very, very careful when you're applying this. Make sure you don't get it on any of the surrounding detail. But just like that, we'll let that dry and these tanks are done. With these tanks out of the way, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. 
and I hope you guys, uh, if you didn't already know about modulation sets, you might go ahead and give those a look. Uh, it's a really great way to take a monochromatic uh, color scheme and then just punch it up to that next level. And then once you come in with these small scale models and you hit them with an enamel wash, you're able to bring out all of that detail that was sculpted in super, super easily. Uh, so if you're interested in more modulation sets, uh, because there are pretty much any color scheme you can think of for a historical tank battalion, there's probably a modulation set out there for them. My very first painting video I ever did on the channel, uh, and I will caution you guys, it's horrible. Um, it was my very, very first time painting on camera. Uh, but I did the same sort of thing um, for Lehman Russes in a U.S. Olive Drab. So I'll link that up in the cards if anyone's interested. And then for my next batch of tanks, I'm going to do those in a Dunkel Growl or a German Dark Grey uh, modulation theme. So there'll be plenty of examples on the channel. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will help you guys get your little tiny tanks painted up super quickly. All right, well, that's all I've got for today, guys. One quick reminder, I do want everyone to know that the Celebration giveaway is still going on right now. Uh, that will close on uh, December 24th, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, and then we'll do the drawing uh, on Christmas Day. So if you're interested in that, I'll link that video up in the card so that you can find out how to get entered. And I will catch you all in the next video.